Welcome to Sharpening in the LAB Color Space. Uh, don't let the LAB Color Space scare you off. It's really easy to work in, and it gives you some fantastic flexibility in image adjustments, especially uh, when you're talking about sharpening. And we'll see that as we move along. Now this image is, uh, as you can see here, it's an RGB, 8-bit. So to change it over to LAB, just simply come up to Image, Mode, LAB. Now, one caveat here, if you're going to ultimately be changing your image to a CMYK color space or a grayscale uh, gray and then printing it out, don't do this method because it can produce banding in the image that you uh, eventually print. But if you're not doing CMYK or grayscale, uh, then go ahead. This is the quick way to get into the LAB color space. Uh, but if you are going to do CMYK or grayscale, go to Edit, Convert to Profile. It's over here, but it's going it, to, it's like, it's down here, near the bottom. And you click Convert to Profile down at the bottom of your little menu. You get this, and then blah, LAB color. Let's just do it the quick way. Image, Mode, LAB. Now we're in the LAB color space. Um, so come over here to your Layers panel. Click on the Channels tab. And here are your channels. You have three of them in the LAB color space, Lightness, A, and B. Uh, the Lightness uh, is a channel that contains all the values for basically the lightness or the brightness of your pixels. The A channel um, contains information for magenta and green color, opposite or complementary colors, and the B channel contains information about the uh, yellows and blues. So the beauty about doing sharpening in the LAB color space is that you can sharpen on only the lightness channel. And this is exactly what you want to do. When you do any sharpening, you do want to work on only brightness values of your pixels. You don't want to work on color. If you saw our video tutorial on sharpening with the unsharp mask in an RGB image, you can't separate them. The red, green, and blue channels contain information on not only those three colors, but also the brightness of those colors. So you, when you do a sharpening, you're hitting not only the brightness, but also the colors itself. Uh, and you can very easily run into big problems with sharpening in RGB, namely halos and color changes. So now, the, here comes the weird part. Uh, the first thing we want to do is just uh, turn on our one color channel, um, the A channel, which is the magentas and greens. And your image turns real weird, but uh, never mind about that. If you uh, really want to see the full color image as you're doing what we're about to do, just click the eyeball on the LAB channel here. And that will make your full color image viewable. But your A channel will be the only one that is active. Now the first thing we're going to do, and here it comes, is we're going to blur. That's right. We're going to put a little bit of a blur on the A channel and the B channel before we do our sharpening. Now this sounds absolutely insane uh, because blurring and sharpening are opposite things. So why would you ever want to blur? And the reason to do this is that, number one, we're working only on color, not on brightness or lightness. And number two, all digital images have a little bit of noise in them. And that noise is going to live in the color channels, specifically and probably blue. Depending on the kind of image you have, you might have a tiny bit of noise in it or you might have a lot of noise in it. So we're going to do a little bit of blurring here. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm probably going to do no more than about one pixel on the A channel and then click OK. Now I'm going to move over to my B channel and do exactly the same thing. Make only the B channel active. Then we're going to come back to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Gaussian Blur, one pixel, OK. Now we're ready to do our sharpening, finally. Now I'm going to make just the lightness channel active. And again, I can't stress it enough, this is the beauty of the LAB color space. I'm working only on the brightness of the lightness pixels. Now I'm going to do Filter, Sharpen, 
unsharp mask and everything else that remains will be the same as the unsharp mask video tutorial. Now, if you did check out that tutorial, um, what you saw was a pretty horrible looking image actually. This is a tough image to work on because you've got a uh, it's 72 pixels per inch so it's a low resolution and um, I was getting a lot of bad stuff going on in the image. If you want to see it before or after your preview in, uh, window uh, is going to be you click in there to get your before and then your after before and after. You can click in there and drag around a little bit and if you want to look at your entire image while you're doing this, just uh, you know, get your before that way and your after that way. Now I'd still ramp this down a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty good, about a hundred. Your amount will control how strongly the effect comes in of sharpening. The radius will determine how thick of an edge around the sharpened area do you want, and the threshold. Just always leave that at zero. Um, this basically says if you ramp this all the way up to 255, what that basically is saying is that I want to see a huge difference in brightness in neighboring pixels before I'll do any sharpening. So when you have it up to 255, you're basically not sharpening anything. Recommended value is just set that guy on zero and leave him on zero. Now. There you go. You've got to inspect your image pretty closely, uh, especially in the edge areas. You see when you come into your image this little box. So if you want your preview window to kind of zoom to that, there you go. And then if I want to come down here, look at that edge. Come down there and you jump around nicely. Now one thing that can be interesting when you do your sharpening is, uh, and I'll usually, in terms of recommended values on the amount, I'll be anywhere from about maybe 80, 90, 100, up to maybe 180, somewhere around there. Depends on your image. Um, in terms of the radius, I always have this way down at about 1, and again, threshold on 0. But one thing you can experiment with also is bringing your amount way down and bringing the radius way up. You can get some really interesting kind of uh, effects by doing that. So experiment with that also. Don't, don't think you're locked into this. Well, my amount has to be up and my radius has to be down. I'll flip them. And sometimes, as I say, you can get, on some images, you can get really nice effects. Okay, so again, I would inspect the edge. This image we're looking at here is already zoomed to 100%. I can see a little bit, maybe too much around there. But I would bring that down maybe a little bit more. And then that's pretty good. I'd go ahead and click OK to accept the change. And I'm pretty much done. Uh, now again, if you want to switch back into the RGB color space, again, you just go Image Mode, come back into RGB. Otherwise, about the only thing, the last thing you've got to remember to do is make sure, I've forgotten to do this plenty of times, is just click on the LAB channel to make all your channels active again. And you are done. Have fun with that. And just remember, real quick and easy, switch to the LAB color space, blur the A and B a tiny bit, and then work on the lightness for the sharpening. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.